on, everybody? Christian Ballard, Ballard Sports Media, coming at you with a preview video here as we look to Thursday, September 1st. Before we get into it, do me a favor. Please hit that thumbs up. Hit that subscribe button if you're new to the channel. Really would appreciate it. We're working on our way to 800 subscribers on YouTube. So, Penn State at Purdue preview. Uh, this game, Thursday, September 1st. Uh, as you can see, the matchup predictor, 60.2%. Um, percent chance for Penn State to win it, uh, 39.8. You can round that to 40. So it's about a 60-40 in favor of the Penn State Nittany Lions who return a six-year senior in Sean Clifford, uh, number 14, 6'2", uh, 212 pounds. Why he keeps coming back, uh, honestly, I really don't know. Um, maybe he wants to – play college football forever. I don't know. He's been there quite some time. But uh, they also bring in guys, um, you know, Mitchell Tinsley, uh, you know, at receiver. You bring it, bring back Keandre Lambert-Smith. Uh, you bring back guys in the uh, running back room like Devin Ford. Um Bring a lot of guys back, and what's so great is they recruit out of the state of Pennsylvania. I mean, Sean Clifford's from Cincinnati, Ohio. Uh, they got another quarterback in Drew Aller, very high on a five-star freshman. Uh, Medina, Ohio is where he's from. So they go all over the map. Uh, it's, it, they go to, like, uh, Newark, New Jersey to pick up a men Vanover, uh, who's a sophomore defensive end. Um, but it really starts with uh, on defense with Adisa Isaac, um, the defensive end from Brooklyn, New York. Um, and, and they bring back guys like Nick Tarburton. Um, Devon Townley is a freshman. Smith Vilbert comes back for his junior season. Jake Wilson comes in for his sophomore season. So, so on and so forth. There's a lot of great – and different rotation when you look at Penn State. You look at this game here, it is uh, in favor of Penn State. The spread is three and a half. The over under is 52 and a half. Um, and again, I mentioned a 60% chance that Penn State will win the game. Who do I think is going to win? That's a good question. Um, I think there's a lot of good offenses. And I think, honestly, I know that we say this all the time, uh, but I really think this is going to – like, truly, I think this is going to come down to quarterback play. Um, we say that all the time, don't we? I'm, oh, it's going to come down to how the quarterbacks do. How, the, how, how are the quarterbacks? It's going to come down to these offenses because Purdue has been known for some good – Offenses. They bring back a senior in Aiden O'Connell. They bring back Will Chapman, who's a junior from Indianapolis. Uh, he's a junior running back, uh, five foot eleven, uh, two thirty five pounds. Pretty good, pretty good size for a running back there. Um, they bring back um, uh, Charlie Jones at receiver, Alex Maxwell, um, T.J. Sheffield, Mershon Rice. Uh, they got a couple different um, got got a couple different ways they could go at receiver. Got some good O line experience too. Daniel Johnson comes in um, from London, um, so uh, he he's a senior offensive lineman. Uh, Eric Miller, yeah, Eric Miller is number seventy four. He's a senior offensive lineman, 6'7", 305, good grief. Mason, Ohio guy right there. Um, they got a guy, DJ Washington, on the offensive line, a senior from Louisville, Kentucky. They got Aaron Roberts they could go with, who's a sophomore. Zach Richards, who's a sophomore. Um, they got a lot of freshmen, too. They recruit the O-line like nobody's business, um, for sure. Uh, they did lose guys like George Karloftis, but – Joe Anderson, um, uh, 
you know, Kadrian Jenkins, those guys should step up in place of George Karloftis, uh, which I, I think he went. I know he was drafted because he was a big name prospect for day two. Um, let me see. Oh, he's with the Chiefs. Okay. So, and apparently he's got a new nickname, Furious George. <laughs> so, anyway. Um, so, yeah, Purdue's got some good experience. Not as much as Penn State does. Um, so, when it comes to experience-wise, you look at this, and it's in favor of Penn State there. The spread is three and a half Penn State. Um, do they cover that? I think closely. I do think this game is going to come down to the wire. I do think it's going to be a good game. I think it's going to come down to who has the ball last, too. And I know Penn State has had their fair share of close games, but I really think James Franklin is still getting better at it, right? Like, they've they've come away with a close win here or there. Uh, they've also – kind of giving games away you know they could try at home with ohio state they can try with michigan they can try even with a team like purdue you know um purdue i would i would say either them or iowa for the big 10 west this year and i think well, I still think it's between – well, it, it's not between anybody, but behind Ohio State for the East is Michigan. Then I'd probably go a team like Penn State, then Michigan State, and, and go on down the list. You can put them in whatever order um, you want to. You – like, okay, we, we talk about the teams overlooking, right? Is there any way either one of these teams is overlooking for their next opponent? Right. Purdue? No. No, no, no. They got Indiana State after Penn State. They're not overlooking Penn State. And Penn State has Ohio. So after this game on Thursday night, they have cupcake, you know, FCS teams uh, or group of five, non, you know, power five, whatever type of games, um, and then it gets kind of tricky for them as Penn State has teams like Auburn, and uh, you look at what Purdue has at Syracuse and Minnesota, Maryland, Nebraska, Wisconsin, all those. So uh, this is really the first test, true test, right out the gate for week one uh, to see what these teams are made of. If the team lose that loses this – it. Whoever loses this game, Purdue or Penn State, is their season done with right away? I never say it's over until a team really has two losses. As long as they can win out, they'll be good. The difference between these two teams last year, too, Penn State lost to an SEC team in a ball game 24 to 10 by 14 points. Purdue in overtime won 48 45 over Tennessee in the Music City Bowl. Um, they're pretty good there. Uh, Purdue has a lot of work to do on the defense, uh, especially losing some guys to the NFL. I expect there to be some points in this game. I expect it to be close and down to the wire. I'm going to go ahead and just give you guys my prediction. Again, I mentioned the spread is three and a half. Not quite going to get to it, Penn State. I do think Penn State's going to win. I think it comes down. I, I think Penn State could have the better defense, and I think it could show up late in the game. And like I said, I know Penn State has struggled in these close games. But I sometimes they can't. At some point, you think James Franklin gets it, right? At some point. I think James Franklin is a great recruiter, a great head coach, probably the right guy for the job. Until he proves otherwise, he's not going out there losing the non-conference and losing to nobody teams. He doesn't really have slip-up years. Um, Penn State's always been an 8-4, and 9-3 and three team. They just need to push themselves a little further to hit the 10-win mark, in my opinion. And I think starting off this year, if they want to go 10-2, if they want to – 
maybe surprise us and go like 11 to one or whatever. Um, if they want to do anything magical at all, they got to start here and win on the road at Purdue. And honestly, they're the favorites in this game. The matchup predictor favors them. The spread says three and a half. I'm going to take Penn State. I don't think they get the three and a half. I do think they get the three part. I'm going to say buy a field goal late. I, I really think it'll come down to a late stop. But basically by a field goal possession, I think they win. I'm going to say 34-31 in favor of Penn State and Nittany Lions. But I want to hear from you guys in the chat what you think about this game. Uh, do you agree with my prediction? Um, uh, if so, let me know. If not, let me know what I'm missing. What am I forgetting? Because I, I, I gave Purdue a lot of credit, man. I like Aiden O'Connell. I, th I think he's great, man. Um, he's the guy. They got some good running backs. King Doru, uh, who I didn't mention before, but he's a senior. That name is sounding uh, pretty familiar to me, actually, King Doru. Uh, but they also, they also got Will Chapman. So um, – they got a couple different guys they could go to at running back, a couple different guys at receiver. They got the senior and Mitchell Finneran. We never really talk about kickers, but I just figured I'd throw that out there too. Um, I think Purdue lost some defensive guys that they got to work with, a lot of young young faces there. Um, but I, they'll still be good this season, 7-5, and 8-4. Probably nine and three. I think these teams could probably even end up with the same record. How funny would that be? Um, although, considering they play each other, that's probably not a possibility. But this is a Thursday night game, 8 p.m. Eastern on Fox, this Thursday on September 1st. Again, Penn State with a 60.2% chance to win, and I got them 34 31 over the Purdue. Boilermakers. I love you guys. Jesus loves you. He's got an amazing plan. Just don't give up and believe that, and great things can happen. I promise you. Love y'all. Jesus loves you. God bless. And from an Alabama fan, Roll Tide, Ballard Sports Media. Check it out. See ya. Mm -hmm.